came back yesterday, landed late afternoon, decided to stay up as long as I could, and uh, that's good because it was Monday Night Football. Pretty ba- pretty darn big football game last night. Cowboys coming off of their bye week and uh, taking on a Giants team where they're hopeful future franchise quarterback getting his first full crack at the uh, at the Cowboys who smacked around Eli Manning and the Giants so so badly in week one that Jones was uh, was doing mop-up duty. And and in that mop-up duty, he got smacked around and and they mopped the floor with, with uh, Jones last night, the hot boys did. Now, the offense looked pretty darn inefficient with the exception of, of, uh, of Ezekiel Elliott until later in the game. And, it, you know, this is definitely fantasy-related because I do have him in a fantasy league. Whenever they take him off the field... Um, you, you're, why? I, you know, I, yeah. well, I know Tony Pollard is, is young and he's and he's he's good. I mean, it's it's not like he's some slappy, you know, but uh, you're doing the other team a favor when you when when he can't, comes off the field. And it was a one possession game, fourth quarter, top of the fourth quarter. And there's Pollard starting starting the drive for the Cowboys. And, and, and later earlier in the first quarter, um, after the first snap coming off the bye week was an interception thrown straight to the Giants. They're moving down the field thanks to Zeke picking up seven, eight yards of carry, and then all of a sudden a snap goes off of of Dak's chest, goes down on the ground, and now they're off schedule, and all of a sudden out goes Zeke, in comes Pollard, three and out after that, you settle for a field goal. He, I guess he can't play 100% of the snaps. But it, it just – it's that sort of inefficiency on offense for, for Dallas that you see throughout a game, which is why they go into MetLife and lose a game against the Jets, which gets more and more mysterious how in the hell that actually happened with each passing week. But not to go negative on Dallas because they did win 37-18 because Dak did make some good throws. He did find uh, Amari Cooper for the backbreaker – he did find Michael Gallup for an exhilarating touchdown. He did find Witt tons of times uh, throughout the night in front of Tess and Boog. And Boog pointed out how the Amari Cooper touchdown was because of a blown coverage where everyone is playing man and the Giants' rookie corner Baker is playing zone and Dak sees it and makes a throw and makes him pay. That's how you win football games, on the road against an opponent that you should beat. And then the hot boys, man. That front seven without Van Der Esch last night when Sean Lee comes in and they don't skip a beat and Demarcus Lawrence is all over your quarterback. That's how Dallas can win the division and football games and make the Super Bowl. Putting pressure with not scheming your way other than a stunt or two, but putting pressure and now having Michael Bennett sitting right next to Demarcus Lawrence is an issue. For a lot of people, and Jalen Smith being as fast as he is, and the rest of that team just just whirling dervishes, coming off of the ball and getting to the quarterback, stopping the run on the way to the quarterback, with the exception of a of a remarkable one handed grab by Golden Tate and a screen pass that went sixty five yards into a red zone where Daniel Jones couldn't score. Cowboys. Kept the Giants' offense down and virtually out the entire night. And that's the way Dallas can win some uh, some serious football games. Four sets of hands in the dirt. Go hunt. Stop the run on the way to the quarterback. Big W. And as for the Giants, hey, um, this has become par for the course, unfortunately, for all of New York football. New York football entering week 10. This year, just think about it. Week one, New York football entered week one with a last night's home team and the Giants saying, let's let's win one last time with Eli. But we got our in our hip pocket. We've got our sixth overall drafted quarterback and Daniel Jones. We got that. We've got Saquon. You know, we don't have Odell anymore, but let's do addition by subtraction. The offensive line is improved. Defensively, you do add peppers in the back back of the uh, secondary. I mean, let's go to work. And with the Jets, they're like, we got a new coach, and we got our quarterback. 
And the new coach is saying the quarterback can throw the piss out of the ball. And it's, you know, got Le'Veon Bell. And they add Ryan Khalil for an offensive line that is suspect before Khalil showed up. And he's going to make sure that they can move the ball enough for a defense that's got a third overall drafted kid in Quinnen Williams and the most expensive free agent linebacker in the history of the game in C.J. Mosley and Jamal Adams on a back end of a defense. And let's all go to work. That was prior to week one. We're entering week 10, a combined 3-14. and 14. New York football, everybody. Hey, at least there's the Nick. No, there's no Knicks. Wait a minute. Hey, there's the Nets. You got the Nets, the Brooklyn Nets. They have one win. No, well, at least there's the Nets. They got three wins. Yeah. You missed a couple. Hey, the Islanders are good. I just uh, got that. Uh, well done, Mango, my... Uh, my hockey nutty director of the Rich Eisen Show. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.